And so maybe maybe it's it's a good idea to to uh, also ask the uh, the flip side of the question. So what's your uh, the philosophical view you've defended that you're most certain of? I'm an absolute certain of substance dualism. Okay. <laughs> there are two parts. What, what if uh, what if I think we have some time? So why don't we uh, look at one of those arguments? What's your what's your like strongest argument for a uh, a view that we have this kind of or us as humans, we have these two different kind of components. We have a physical component and then a another spiritual. Well, I have many arguments, but uh, let's take one from uh, from modern science. Uh, modern science. Uh, <laughs> um, first is that uh, severed nerves can be uh, reconnected, not merely peripheral nerves in the hand and so on, but uh, the spinal cord nerves and eventually, uh, in the same pattern, uh, brain nerves, so that bits of the brain can be replaced by other bits of the brain uh, taken from elsewhere. And um, the second discovery was that um, while everybody knew that uh, thoughts and feelings depend on the cerebral cortex, uh, the top part of the brain, and um, there are two, two halves, there's a left cerebral cortex and a right cerebral cortex. And the discovery was that um, the resulting person uh, has uh, just the same thoughts and feelings and so on, whichever of these cortexes you remove. So, uh, consider the following operation, which could be done one day, it won't be done next year, but it will be done one day. Um, somebody gets hold of me and takes out uh, all of the cerebral cortex and gets hold of two unfortunates uh, other people and takes out their cerebral cortex and puts my left cerebral cortex into one of these people and my right cerebral cortex into another. Then both of these people will uh, have enough to make consciousness. They'll both have bottom part of the brain and a, and a cortex. And uh, after all this, they will wake up. And since each of them has the cortex on which my thoughts and feelings depend, they will both claim to be me, they will both live my life, <laughs> they will both behave like me, and so on. Um, so which is me? And uh, there's absolutely no way in which you could tell this, because uh, they've both got parts of my brain, and they've both uh, behave like me, got my sorts of thoughts. But one of them must be me, or rather, uh, there are three possibilities. The left hand one's me, and the right hand is one isn't, or conversely, or neither of them are. They can't both be, because <laughs> um, neither of them know what's happening to the other. Um, so, um, well, it's, have I survived the operation? Well, it's certainly possible I have, and possible I haven't. But um, there would be no way of telling this. And you couldn't tell, you couldn't identify me uh, uh, on the basis of my physical nature, uh, the phys um, because it will be similar in both cases. Um, you couldn't identify me on the basis of my thoughts and feelings. Um, there must be something else that makes me me, and that's the soul. Now you can see that more precisely if you just take one of these people. Um, this person. It's compatible with everything about this person uh, that it's me because um, it's got the crucial part of my brain and uh, got uh, and can claims to have been me and so on. On the other hand, it's also compatible with everything that it isn't me. And the other one is, or neither are. So there can only be a truth that it is me or that it isn't me if it doesn't depend on which thoughts and feelings the resulting person has, and it doesn't depend entirely on which part of the brain they have. Uh, so there wouldn't be a truth about which person had survived the operation unless being me consists in something else, and something else can't be the properties, the thoughts and feelings and so on, and it can't be the brain, because we know all that and still still can't answer the question. So it must be something immaterial that we can't see that makes me me. And if that one's me, the immaterial thing goes that way. And if that one's me, but we don't know, we couldn't say. And that means 
there can only be, more generally, there can only be truths about whether a future person is me if being me doesn't consist in the physical. So um, here, here's another... Do you follow that? Yeah, so uh, yeah, there, you have these, uh, these different options and you can't basically, you, if you take this person out or if you take their cerebral cortex out and you put it in two different people, um, I get the, the sort of, I guess you'd call it a trichotomy between these three different options and you can't, yeah. you can't yeah. pick the, uh, well, it seems, that, yeah, it, it does sort of present a sort of uh, puzzle there. And so for, for me, I'm, I, I approach that question as an agnostic, so I'm not sure uh, where I fall on it. I wouldn't, uh, I guess, hearing it for the first time from you, I'm not sure how I would respond to it. Yeah. Um, Let me just put it uh, uh, very quickly, a slightly different argument. If all there was um, to being the person you are is that body with brain and having certain thoughts and feelings attached to it, and all there was to this person being this person is having this body and certain feeling attached to me, then there wouldn't be any difference between you having that body and my, me having this body and conversely, me having that body and you having this body, because in both cases, the physical matter would be the same and the thoughts and feelings associated with would be the same. But of course, there is a difference. There's a vast difference. And again, there must be something else that makes the difference. Okay, walk me through that one more time. So how does, how does that argument look well, like one more time? Well, the, the opposition, the physicalist says, um, we are physical things. Right. Very much. Uh, they all, if they are a fairly liberal-minded physicalist, they will say, "Well, yes, associated with this body are, are not merely events in the brain, but thoughts and feelings, beliefs and desires, a mental life. But the mental life is a property of the body on that view, okay. um, not a property of the self." Okay. Well, if that is all there is, just the physical matter and the physical properties and mental properties associated with it, then there wouldn't be any difference between you, on the one hand, you having this body and me having this body, which is the case, and an alternative, me having that body and you having this body, which isn't the case, because in both cases it would be the same body associated with the same properties. Okay. So I, I guess I'm still there's a, there's a still a disconnect for me. I'm not sure how we're able to to switch uh, positions here because for for me I'm thinking like I have these physical things going on in my brain, right? And then these mental properties are associated with those physical events or yeah. neurons firing and all that kind of stuff. How are we getting this? How are we able? You're, to you're not able to do it. But okay. my point is there is a difference. The world could have been made differently. Okay. Uh, I mean, think of yourself as it were. Think of you uh, in a f past life being told, being given a, a snapshot of the future life, and you are being told, look, um, this is going to happen in the future. There's going to be this guy identified by his body, and he's going to have these thoughts and feelings. There's going to be this body identified, with, uh, and he's going to have those thoughts and feelings. Um, but you would say, yes, but in the past past life, you would say, yes, but which is going to be me? And that would be a further part, other than knowing that there was a guy here who was going to have thoughts and feelings and a guy here who was going to have thoughts and feelings. Okay, I see, I see. Yeah, that's another, uh, that's another interesting argument.